Hello, my name is Mario Lozano, and in this presentation, I'm going to defend my master thesis with the title Subject Driven Generation Techniques for a Stable Diffusion Model A Modern Approach to Data Augmentation. Throughout the presentation, we are going to follow this outline. First, we are going to introduce the topic and the research objectives. Then, we are going to explain some background for understanding the methods that we have developed, the experiments we have conducted, and then with the results, we are going to make some discussion and state some significant conclusions. So let's dive in with the first topic, introduction. Text-based image generation models have reached a point of maturity where they are capable of generating high fidelity photorealistic images. These images have attained a degree of quality that renders them suitable for practical implementations and that can often be confused with real photographs to the majority of the observers. Moreover, text-to-image models have tons of applications. For example, super-resolution, in which we increase the resolution of a given image. In, in painting, we fill in parts of an image with plausible content. In outpainting, we generate content beyond the boundaries of a given image. Finally, in a style transfer, we apply the artistic style of one image to another. Summarizing, text-to-image models generate high-fidelity photorealistic images and we get access to some techniques that facilitate the enhanced manipulation and control of these generative models. Nevertheless, for completing the introduction, we highlight that deep learning requires vast quantities of data, which is usually difficult and expensive to get. With all these facts in mind, let's state the research objectives. It is logical to ask then the question, to what extent can images generated by text-to-image systems improve the performance of computer vision models? This thesis focuses on solving this question from the deep learning perspective. To address this question, we have developed an experimental framework to test the synthetic images generated by the stable diffusion model on several classical computer vision tasks. Concretely, we approach this issue through the lens of data augmentation, with a specific focus on its applicability to classification and segmentation problems. Now, let's focus on the background. The fundamental topic that we need is data augmentation. The idea behind this concept is to increase the diversity of the training data in order to teach the model to deal more accurately with real data. We have some basic and some more advanced approaches. Between the basic, we find image manipulation, image erasing, and image mix. Whereas for advanced approaches, we find, for example, auto augment, that is a technique that automatically searches for the best combinations of transformations to create a policy. Another one is feature augmentation, that performs the transformations in a learned feature space. Nevertheless, in this work, we are going to focus on deep generative models. Data augmentation aims to generate additional samples that follow the same distribution as the original dataset. Deep generative models like generative adversari adversarial networks, GANs, are commonly used for this purpose. But how does generative data augmentation work? The process involves using a trained model to generate additional synthetic samples. These generated samples can be used to augment the original dataset. Effectively, while doing this, we increase the diversity and size of the dataset. One of the most representative methods is GANs. Nevertheless, in this master thesis, we are going to focus on diffusion probabilistic models. These models are based on creating a Markov chain in which at each step they add Gaussian noise to an image in a diffusion process, and then they learn to undo it. The forward diffusion process is defined as a Markov chain in which the state of a given sample depends only on the state of the previous sample. It is demonstrated that as t approaches the limit, the distribution will lose all the information of the original picture. As with the forward process, the reverse diffusion process can also be expressed as a Markov chain. This one based on conditional probabilities. 
This reverse diffusion process involves a neural network to remove the noise from an image in a stepwise manner. Thus, starting from pure Gaussian noise, noise is removed step by step to arrive at an image that resembles the training distribution. It is important to highlight that the neural network that the authors of the diffusion probabilistic models propose aims at predicting the noise and then they remove it in an iterative process. Nevertheless, probabilistic diffusion models have a fundamental flow. They operate in the pixel space, and this requires enormous computational resources. Thus, latent diffusion models originate, and they use latent space instead of pixel space in order to speed up the training and inference. So, from a given image, we can get the representation of that image in the latent space. We can apply the diffusion process and then the denoising unit network can learn to undo the noise thanks to some conditioning elements. Then, when we have the result, we get it back to the pixel space. Between the techniques developed for latent diffusion models, Dreambooth and textual inversion stand out. Both allow subject driven generation, which consists of reconstructing a subject in different contexts while maintaining its fundamental characteristics, as we can see in the inference part of the picture. The Dream Booth approach consists on taking a few images of the subject to be generated together with the name of the corresponding class, and then it returns the fine-tuned model with a unique identifier referring to the subject. Dream Booth has two parts, a lower resolution one and a super resolution one for the subject's small details. On the other hand, textual inversion proposes finding an embedding token for a new token while keeping the rest of the components intact. The idea works because in text-to-image models, the given textual description is converted into a set of tokens. Subsequently, its token is replaced with its embedding vector, which is passed to the final model. Therefore, the approach behind textual inversion is to find the embedding vectors that allow new concepts to be represented. For example, the method takes a placeholder string S star to represent the concept to be learned and replaces the associated embedding vector with the new one. In this way, we can condition the generation on these embedding vectors and generate the pictures of the subject that we are considering. So, text to image models are great. However, there are still significant shortcomings in the control of the generated images. For example, the anatomy of people of the arrangement of objects. Thus, ControlNet is proposed. ControlNet is a neural network architecture. This structure works by creating two copies of the weights of a text-to-image model. One copy is trainable and the other one is locked. Thus, the first one is trained to learn conditional control elements for specific tasks. In contrast, the second one stays locked to maintain the network's capabilities. The control net authors provide a list of trained networks with different conditioning elements. In this master thesis, we are going to use Kanye's detections and segmentation maps. And now, let's continue with the methods. First, we need to take into account that we are going to use generative augmentation. So, we need a generative model to generate some images to augment the dataset. The model that we have decided to use is a stable diffusion. Stable diffusion is an open source model trained on Lion 5B. This is a dataset of text image pairs that is one of the largest ones openly accessible in the world. And we have to take into account that a stable diffusion is a latent diffusion model and thus operates in the latent space. So, our first method involves subject driven augmentation. So, if we remember the generative data augmentation, we need a text-to-image model. Our approach is to personalize the text-to-image model with some subject-driven techniques. Thus, we need to randomly select input images within the same class that we want to augment and a text-to-image model. Then we will use the subject-driven techniques, for example, textual inversion and dream booth, and we'll get the personalized text-to-image model. Both Dreambooth and textual inversion strategies allow the pipeline to be generalistic. 
However, they are a complex approach that requires customizing a text-to-image model for each one of the classes. For this purpose, we have developed the class name-based augmentation method that takes the class identifier and it builds a prompt with it. Then the text-to-image model is able to generate images for the same class. But the image generation model may not have enough information to be able to generalize images of certain classes. These last two methods are great for tasks such as classification. Nevertheless, a challenge arises when aiming to control the generated images for tasks such as segmentation. This is because generating subjects with specific poses or arrangement becomes really difficult. The solution we have found is to use ControlNet to condition the text-to-image model with some conditional elements. In this case, we are using segmentation maps, but also throughout this work we are going to use Kanyet's detections. Now let's define the experiments and the results we have obtained to check how these methods work. First, we need to do some preliminary experiments in order to get to know the tools and methods. The first one checks the influence of the number of images. So we found out that better quality synthetic images are obtained using five real images. This means that using just one image is unfeasible. And if we use more than one image, the subjects may not be the same. Thus, we need to do the second experiment. In it, we take the domain of dogs and incrementally, we use more and more different breeds. For example, for the subject number one, we get the golden retriever dogs and we apply dream booth and we get these images. For textual inversion, we get these images. Then we use the subset of golden retrievers plus the German shepherds and we get these images and these images. Then for number three, we add the Siberian Husky, then the Corgi and the Bulldog for the subset number four. As we can see, it is possible to use subject-driven techniques with different subjects of the same class. And now let's head to the main experiments. For it, we need to state some information. The data set that we are going to use are Oxford 3T PET and FOOT 101. The main one is going to be Oxford PET with 37 breeds of cats and dogs and 200 images per class. We are going to use this data set for classification and segmentation since it has these annotations. And then we are also going to use FOOT 101 with 101 food categories. For the networks, we are going to use ResNet 34 and LibLab B3, this last one for segmentation. Hugging Face diffuses library for the models and subject driven techniques. And then as the approaches, we are going to use the following ones. The first one is no augmentation baseline. It is a common and comparative starting point for assessing the performance of other approaches. Then custom data augmentation for classical data augmentation techniques. In it, we are going to use the following transformations, horizontal flip, color jitter, Gaussian blur, and random rotation. Then some automated augmentation policies like auto augment and run augment, and then our methods with dream booth, text invention, and a stable division prompt that is going to be the one for class name base. One of the main experiments that we have conducted takes subject-driven and compare these techniques with classical data augmentation techniques. For this purpose, we're going to use the Oxford dataset and we are going to plot the accuracy with regards to the percentage of data of the training set that we are using. In here, we are seeing the comparison between the no augmentation baseline and the textual inversion one. In here, we can see that subject-driven augmentation significantly improves model performance when real data is scarce. Then, with 5% and 10% of the data in training data, we are getting better accuracies with the textual inversion data augmentation. The results with the stable diffusion prompt are quite similar, and we can also see improvements. In the case of textual inversion, remember that we have an improvement of up to 19.11%. Finally, we have the results for DreamBooth. And seeing the complete plot, we realize that subject-driven augmentation does not improve model performance 
when sufficient real data is available. Finally, if we add the classical data augmentation results, we'll see that these ones fail miserably on small data sets. And we need to take into account that the subject human augmentation ones, no. In fact, they improve the model performance significantly. In general terms, the images generated by Dreambooth, Textual Inversion, and Stable Diffusion Pro are of very high quality. Nevertheless, some of the pictures have some flaws and artifacts. In the last experiment, we were fixing the number of synthetic images to 50, and we were varying the percentage of the training data that we were using. In this one, we are going to do just the opposite. We are going to change the number of generated data, and we are going to set fixed the training percentage used. So we consider two cases, 100% of the training data and 50% of the training data. For the 100%, that is enough information it does not make sense to use subject driven augmentation. The more images we add, the lower the accuracy that we get. On the other hand, using the subject driven techniques makes much sense when using 5% of the real training data. By adding only a few images, 5, the accuracy increases substantially, up to 18.93% over the baseline. But what if we train a model just with synthetic images? The idea is to know to what extent the information contained in the synthetic images is faithful to reality and allows, without the help of real images, to obtain competitive results. Our findings show that synthetic images contain usable information. However, these images contain less information than real images. For example, if we look at the graph, we will realize that the accuracy that we achieve is way lower than using 100 real images. Thus, there is still a gap between models trained with synthetic images and those trained with real ones. Next, we ask the question, is it possible to improve the results using conditional control? For this purpose, we take the stable diffusion prompt approach and use ControlNet pre-trained with Kanye's detections. Generally, the images enhanced by ControlNet exhibit fewer anatomical defects than their non-ControlNet counterparts. However, the overall releasing of these images is diminished. Our findings indicate that for the cases with 150% real images, the accuracy does not improve with respect to the new augmentation baseline. Nevertheless, with 5% real images and 2,000 synthetic ones, the accuracy increases up to 23.5% over the new augmentation baseline. Now, if we compare the results with the ones obtained in previous experiments, we see that conditional control can improve the fidelity of synthetic images, and thus it obtains a better results than the top performing one in the previous ones, that was textual inversion. We have also tested these approaches in other tasks, such as segmentation. We utilize the stable diffusion prompt approach, incorporating conditional control mechanisms based on segmentation maps. Subject-driven augmentation can be applied to a segmentation task, and we saw some improvements. Nevertheless, we cannot say that this is statistically significant, but definitely subject-driven augmentation is relevant beyond classification. We have also run some experiments to see if combining subject-driven augmentations and classical data augmentation techniques yields any improvement we find out that they don't. Combining these techniques doesn't work. Then we also test another domain, the FOOT 101, and we highlight the effectiveness of augmenting a dataset with synthetic images, particularly when the dataset size is small. In here, we can see some pictures created by a stable diffusion prompt for the FOOT 101 domain. Now, let's discuss the results 
and the contributions to computer vision. From our experiments, we draw the following implications. First, subject-driven augmentation is a valid and competitive approach to data augmentation. Second, subject-driven augmentation is especially relevant in datasets where data is scarce or expensive. And third, there is still a relevant gap between synthetic and real images. Summarizing, this master thesis have made the following contributions to computer vision. The cost of creating large quality datasets is reduced. It is extremely expensive to have large datasets with which to train deep learning architectures. Therefore, generative augmentation approaches allow fused learning. They allow a model to be trained to generalize and make accurate predictions with only a limited number of label examples for each class. Another possibility is zero-shot learning. This is, no real-world training data is available. What is being done is a transfer of information from the text to image model to a model specialized in another task. The fact that there is no real data implies that in practical terms, all the information with which the task is learned comes from the text to image model. Our data imply that it is possible to obtain usable results with zero-shot learning. However, we found that there is still significant gaps between synthetic and real images. Finally, bias reduction, because these techniques allow to increase the diversity of different datasets. Finally, let's see the conclusions of this work. We demonstrated the effectiveness of subject-driven augmentation as a competitive data augmentation technique, accuracy performance improvements of up to 19%. We established that adding synthetic images to a small dataset yields significant benefits, up to a certain threshold. We demonstrate that competitive results can be achieved by training a computer vision model solely on synthetic images. Still, synthetic images are significantly behind real ones. We explore the incorporation of conditional control for further enhancing the outcomes, up to 23.47%. We showcase the versatility of the approach in other tasks, segmentation and datasets. Foot 101. Finally, we are going to give some guidelines for future work and research. For further enhancing this master thesis, one of the possible future works is automatic image selection based on the FID score. This metric is used to evaluate the quality and diversity of images generated by text to image model. Thus, we can select which images are better for being in the augmented dataset. Both Dreambooth and Textual Inversion authors propose improvements to their methods, so their results will probably be enhanced by doing these improvements. For this project, we have used the version 1.5 of Stable Diffusion. Nevertheless, we can still use better and more advanced text-to-image models, such as the version 2 of Stable Diffusion. Another possibility is to work on the environmental impact, because the experiments need a lot of computational resources and electricity to be run. Finally, we propose to keep improving the bias reduction by further increasing the diversity of different datasets. And with this, we conclude our presentation for the master thesis, subject-driven generation techniques for a stable diffusion model, a modern approach to data augmentation.